just a lot of value in knowing where you stand in the world, you know, just like an acceptance of reality. And for that reason, uh, normally I do review plus art for movies that I really enjoy, and I I shan't be doing some art for this one. <laughs> this movie is too well drawn, too beautiful to look at and to experience. I claim to be an artist. I do not claim to be a great artist. And, and you know what? And that's okay. That's fine. I'm fine with that. I'm fine. Good. With, I'm great. I'm good. I'm. I'm. I am. I, that. I. I'm good with it. That's. It's just what it is. What it is. What's up? My name is John Bonjour. I am an artist and a film enthusiast. I have not drawn some art, like I said seconds ago. <laughs> but I would like to enthuse about some film. Today we are talking about The Boy and the Heron. It is the most recent Studio Ghibli movie, potentially Hayao Miyazaki's final film, although I feel like he said that a couple of times, so I, I don't know. It's kind of like when Tarantino says like, oh, I'm only gonna do, what, 10 films? Is that what he said? But then he's like, oh, but I mean, Kill Bill only counts as one, because really it's supposed to be one, and like, I don't know if I really count this, because it's like a series, you know, you say it's your final one, and then like, is it? Probably not. If I'm just, if I'm putting money on it, probably not. I think that creative people love doing creative things too much to just stop when they still have creative thoughts. Anyway, the point is Studio Ghibli as a whole has, is it Ghibli? Is it Ghibli or Ghibli? I've always thought it was Ghibli and I think I've always heard Ghibli, but then like now I'm in my head about it, you know? I don't trust myself enough to think that that's true. This is the same thing with GIF and GIF. Like, I don't I don't want to get into that kind of culture war. That's not the kind of YouTube channel I want to be. I'm going to say Studio Ghibli, and if that's wrong, maybe I don't want to be right. <laughs> Studio Ghibli has made a lot of movies that I think are absurdly good. Like, insanely good. Howl's Moving Castle, I think, is incredible. Spirited Away, so good. Ponyo is adorable. There's a lot. My Neighbor Totoro. A lot of movies that I think are really incredible, and some movies that I think are really well drawn, <laughs> like really well created, but I just cannot get into. It's there's a there's a side of Studio Ghibli that I just don't connect with. I think the kind of Studio Ghibli that I do connect with is the one that's about these spirit worlds and sort of alternate creations and other, you know. The, the more creative, creature-focused, people wandering through wastelands kind of things. I've always gravitated toward that kind of story, so it makes sense that I would really appreciate those. But then there's the other side of Ghibli where it's just kind of like everyday life, people doing normal things. Normal. There's still usually like a heightened sense. But like, like Key's Delivery Service, I think is really good. I just don't really enjoy it because it's just, that's just, it, it does nothing for me. I don't know. I don't connect with it. In no way am I saying that it makes it a bad movie. It's, I, please don't, don't hear me say that. That's a brilliant movie. I'm sure it's incredible. I just don't like it. I say all that to say when this movie started, the first quarter, maybe first act of this movie is the kind of Ghibli that I don't necessarily like. So it's a little bit slower to get going. And if you're like me and you like these crazier worlds, these more imaginative kind of pieces, the first part of this movie is gonna be probably just as tough for you as it was for me. I think it was, like I said, I mean, you can only be so upset watching something that somebody's drawn so, so perfectly. Like there's, there's an element of it that still is beautiful. But my experience with it was, I just, I just got bored in that first act also didn't help that they were playing the Beyonce movie in the theater next to me, and it was, it was bumping, boys. They blasted that shit to 11. I was not able to focus on this very heartfelt, touching story about a boy who's just lost his mother and is now trying to reacclimate into the world. No part of me was connected to that because just next to me, it was like, <coughs> and it's just, I cannot blame the movie for that. I also can't blame the movie for being the kind of movie that it wants to be, even if it doesn't connect with me. I'm sure a lot of people will absolutely connect with that. Just not really my jam. <laughs> but then uh, there's a scene with some frogs and some fish and the heron, which I feel like is also something that I want to talk about, but we'll get to that. Uh, there's a scene with the heron and some frogs and some fish. And from that moment on, I was, I was hooked. This movie is spectacular. Absolutely incredible. I, I had several fears kind of throughout it, and each one was just 
gently dissuaded. By the end of the movie, I felt stupid for feeling like I should be worried about any of these things. But at the beginning, I thought it was gonna be kind of boring. I thought it was gonna be kind of mundane. And then when it kind of got into the crazier side of it, I started feeling this tension within me in the movie of like, they're, they're introducing a lot of stuff. A lot of concepts are being brought on board and it feels like they're trying to get at seven or eight pretty big concept things, big idea thematic things. And I was a little worried that they may not be able to kind of balance all those things super well. Again, I, this is all just, this is just one long apology video for how stupid I am. But by the end of the movie, they have whittled down all of these crazy concepts into one specific theme that is so touching and profoundly solid. I feel stupid for even thinking that it might not be well handled. Normally in these videos, I want to talk spoilers. I'm going to leave this one relatively spoiler free because I think you should see this movie. I really do. Like, I think... I think this is a film that deserves your attention in a way that most films really don't. It's one of those things where you can watch it and feel like you kind of have a good handle on what's going on. And then I, feel, I just get this sense that the more I watch it, the more I'm going to pick up on and the more things are going to mean things to me and be more important. But I never felt disappointed by the movie. Like, I, I feel like I'm just scratching the surface, but not because the movie's holding me at arm's length, but because there's just so much depth there that even if I dive all the way in, I'm still not reaching the bottom. And I, I love that kind of movie. That is my favorite film experience is when you go in and you feel like you were fully immersed and there's still so much more to get out of it. The Heron is incredible. There's like a, there's like, a, he's, I, I, I don't want to spoil too much. It's about halfway through. So if you don't want to know anything, stop the video right now. Great movie, incredible, please go see it. Like, please go see this movie. We need this kind of animation. Side tangent on animation, what a year, right? Like it's been an insane year for animation. Spider-Verse, the Ninja Turtles movie, this now, some of the most impressive animation we have seen in years, and it all came out this year. Crazy, that's insane to me. Anyway, about halfway through, the Heron uh, gets shot with an arrow, the boy hits him with an arrow, and he just kind of, <laughs> He morphs into this weird little troll looking fella and he's that way for like the majority of the movie. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I guess I don't really have anything to like say about that other than just, it's a perfect example of the, the whimsical nature of this movie. For a movie that is so steeped in sadness and loss and grief, there's so much just cute shit in this movie. It's so weird and adorable and just like, I don't know, it's, I'm, I'm trying to put the word to it, but there's like a, a, a very healthy, very good dissonance between the sadness of the story and the, just the colorful whimsy of the world. I mean, I'm not even sure what I'm saying. I just, I just love the tone that this strikes. It feels completely unique and it's like, even from other Ghibli movies, it feels like it just carves its own little world. And also, this is one of the best stories they've ever told. This is, I mean, I feel so weird about this because like Spirited Away has always been top notch. That's always been my favorite. It could be recency bias, so don't hold me to this. Um, to, uh, I, this might be my favorite Ghibli movie. Yeah, it really might. The only things that kind of hold it back for me are the beginning, like I said, just not really connecting with me specifically. But even then, I wonder if I saw this movie again, I get the feeling that I would connect way more with a lot of the emotional stakes that it tries to kind of lay the groundwork for in the beginning. So I don't know. I Yeah, I, 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 it might be my favorite. All that to say, The Boy and the Heron, highly recommend checking this out. I think it is one of the best movies that has come out this year. I'll be doing a top 10 list at the end of the year and... It's almost the end of the year, huh? Do you guys think about that? It's like, it's full-blown December. I really should make that video. <laughs> I would be shocked if this didn't make it on my top 10 list for this year. Uh, and it's just like, it's just such a good experience. I know they're running a subbed and a dubbed version. So like subtitles and an English audio version. I saw it with the subtitles, I just because I, I don't know, I enjoy that. I don't think that that's a necessity, but I do think it enhanced the experience for me. Just depends on how much you want to read, quite honestly. I'm sure it was a great, I just can't speak to the English dub, but I'm, I, I assume it was good. They usually are. If you have like, not super young kids, but if you have kids, I would say this would be a really good movie to take them to. Again, not super young. There's some stuff in here that's a little like, 
But like if you have older kids, maybe like 10, 10 and above, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a dad. I'm not, I'm not anyone's dad, but I'm definitely not. <laughs> it's, I end all the videos with that. If this is your first time, I say I'm not your dad. That's a thing. I'm getting so distracted today. This is a great movie, is the point. Brilliant piece of cinema. Absolutely highly recommend. Thank you for watching this video and checking out my channel. If you'd like to hear more of my thoughts on movies, comics, TV shows, animation, cactuses, cacti, not sure what the plural is, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit whatever bell or gizmo you're supposed to hit, and comment down below, would you like me to review next, or do none of those things because, as aforementioned, I'm not your dad. Yep. <laughs>